Hello, this is Dr. Tom Groover from Boulder Chiropractic Clinic. I would like to talk to you about neuromuscular control and stability and neuromuscular re-education. I was reading an article recently about this topic that was written from a allopathic medicine point of view. Now allopathic medicine uh, is a way of treating the body and the mind uh, based on symptoms. So, you know, in the past, you know, if you had knee pain, the tendency would be to try and maybe massage the knee or put some cream on it or ultrasound it or um, uh, take a pain medication or an anti-inflammatory medication. And uh, that's uh, like putting a Band-Aid on something, you know, it uh, doesn't really solve the problem uh, at its cause. So the authors of the article were talking about the re-education that's necessary, they felt, for, they felt necessary for um, abnormal joint motion. So the subject they were discussing was the motion of a knee uh, where the runner, uh, the patient was a runner, and when they ran, their knee would flop outward. And so they worked with this runner to keep the knee so that it remained in line, so the center of the knee passed and it maintained its alignment with the second toe, so that the person could, you know, move correctly and take the stress off the knee tissues and reduce pain when running. And that this would require many thousands of repetitions to be able to accomplish this, that they'd be working at this, working at this, working at this, this, very, very consciously until eventually they could do this without having to consciously focus on this correct motion. It would be something that they, their body would have learned. Now, my way of looking at it is a little different in that is a lot of times these knee motion uh, abnormalities are not occurring because of a lack of training. Uh, they're occurring because the knee itself is misaligned. The joint itself, the way the bones oppose each other is abnormal. And because of this n abnormal positioning, then you have abnormal motion in the joint. So now within your knee, there are all kinds of sensors that report information to your brain. and. Uh, and what will occur is when the knee misaligns, then uh, the brain feedback will become abnormal, so the output to the knee will be abnormal as well. So I look at the vastus medialis and, and vastus lateralis muscles, the uh, quadriceps, to see how their, how their strength might be. I test the muscle itself, and if they have a, a weak vastus medialis, for instance, which is responsible for the medial positioning of the knee, then the tendency is for the knee to flop out. Or if they have a weak vastus lateralis, which is responsible for the lateral positioning of the knee, uh, the knee can flop in. Also, the popliteus muscle, which is a little muscle in the back side of the knee, uh, responsible for turning the, the tibia, the lower leg, internal uh, Lee, then what will happen is when that misaligns then the person has uh, trouble steering when they're running and can roll their ankle very easily and stuff like that. So um, I look at these things and adjust the knee according to the kind of misalignment that's occurring. So now the knee can misalign in a number of ways. The medial side of the knee could be pushed forward or backward. The lateral side could be pushed forward or backward. Both front and back, both sides of the knee could be pushed back or forward. Um, so uh, it's important to know what those things are and to know how to uh, align them to do the adjusting necessary to get them back in alignment and retest the muscles and see that they're fully strong so that the knee really does have the ability to just spontaneously function just exactly the way it's meant to function. Now, if there occurs some abnormal motion after that, 
Then we do neuromuscular re-education training to get the knee to track properly and, uh, and increase the person's performance, get their strength, Im improve their strength and, and their coordination and get the muscle tone right so that you don't have short and long muscles, you don't have muscle knots and contractions. So this is the way we deal with it here in this office. We don't consider uh, an abnormal knee motion to necessarily be occurring from a lack of training, but simply that the actual aberrant motion can be occurring because the joint itself is not mechanically aligned, so it can't have mechanically appropriate movement in the first place. So if you're interested in this topic and want to hear more about it, please let me know. If you'd like me to speak about something else, some other topic, please do so also. Thank you.